Hello and welcome to Angular Journals. Today's tutorial is going to cover your dashboard. Your dashboard is the first page you're going to see right after you register for the site and each time you log in. By default, there are three sections displayed on your dashboard. There are the statistics for the current year, there are the recent journal entries, and the weather. The statistics for the current year is just kind of a nice summary of what you've logged so far this year. It tells you the number of trips logged, the number of hours fished, the number of fish caught, and the number of waypoints uploaded. The recent journal entries section shows you the four most recent journal entries that you have access to. That means either you authored those journal entries or someone else authored those journal entries, but they are sharing some of the information about those journal entries with you. In this list, you can click on any one of the items and it will take you to a page where you can view the details of that journal entry. This is the View Journal Entries page, and this is where you'll actually view and search for journal entries. This page is covered in detail in a later tutorial, so I'm not going to cover much about it now, but just know that from your recent journal entries on your dashboard, you can click on one of them and it'll take you to a page where you can view the details for that journal entry. The final section automatically displayed on your dashboard is the weather section. The weather section shows you um, the current temperature, the current conditions, the current wind speed, and the wind gusts. You can also view the three-day forecast in a dialog by clicking the view three-day forecast link and it will bring up a dialog showing you what the forecast is for the next day, for the next three days. And the view 36 hour hourly forecast is also in a dialog and you can scroll through here and view the weather for the next 36 hours. You can change the location for the weather by going into this text box and typing in another location. We'll check out Duluth, Minnesota. And it'll load the weather for Duluth, Minnesota. You can also, you know, you can do this as many times as you wish. So we could also check out St. Cloud, Minnesota. And it'll load the weather for St. Cloud, Minnesota. Now if you notice, when I first came into this dashboard, it automatically loaded the weather for me for St. Paul Park. So if I click on the dashboard, you'll see that it's loaded for St. Paul Park automatically. Now I can set which location the weather loads for when I visit this page by going to My Preferences, Application Settings, and finding the default weather location application setting. By default, the very first time you come into your dashboard is going to be Minneapolis, Minnesota, but you can change that by just putting it to whatever you wish. We'll go Rochester, Minnesota, just to show you how it works. So I'll change my location, I'll click Save Setting, and I'll wait for the successfully updated message, and I'll go back to my dashboard. And now the weather will automatically load for Rochester, Minnesota. There are two additional sections that are available for display on your dashboard. They are the DNR News and River Gauges. What we have done at Angler Journals is we have gone out to each of the DNR websites and looked for their RSS feeds for their news publications. If, they, if the DNR agency had an RSS feed, we pulled in the information about that RSS feed and are allowing you to then display that information on your dashboard. So if you want to view the news for your DNR, your local DNR agency, you go to My Preferences, Application Settings, and you find the DNR RSS News Feeds application setting. And you click the Select Feeds link. And now I need to select a state. So I want to view the news for Minnesota. And I see they do have an available feed, and it's called News. I'm going to add that feed to my list. So you'll see it gets added to the selected feeds list. I can select multiples, so I also know for sure that Nebraska has a news feed so its title is also news so I'm going to go add feed now I have Minnesota news and Nebraska news selected I can remove a feed from here as well so now I only have Minnesota selected and some states do not have an RSS feed um, for example uh, it looks like Kansas does have one Kentucky does not have one so if your state does not have an RSS news feed for their Department of Natural Resources, then you won't be able to pull the news into your dashboard. Okay, so I've selected Minnesota. I am going to close the dialog, 
and I'm going to click Save Setting. And there's my successfully updated message. And now I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I'll see the news articles loaded for Minnesota. Here they are down here on the lower left. If I hover my mouse over each item, I can see the full title. We don't display the full title here because sometimes they actually make these titles super, super long. I mean, they can get over 150 characters. So we just show you a subset of the title um, right here, but if you hover over it, you can view the entire title. And you can click on whichever news article you want to read, and it'll open up a new tab in your browser or a new window, and it'll take you out to the website so you can view the article in its entirety. The final section available on your dashboard are river gauges. I fish the river a lot, so when I log in to the website, I want to be able to see what the river's been doing, you know, what the flow and what the levels are. So in order to get river gauges to show up on my dashboard, I go to my preferences, application settings, and the first thing I have to do is I have to tell the application that I fished the river. So I see this, do you fish the river? I click yes and I save the setting and then once I've saved the setting you'll see that another option became available to me and that is the default river gauge application setting and I'm gonna select my state Minnesota and I'm gonna come to this text box and I'm gonna start typing and what will happen is it'll actually start filtering down the available river gauges for my state what we've done at Angler Journals is we have gone out to NOAA and pulled in all of the river gauges that they monitor and organized them by state and made them available for you to put on your dashboard and to also pull in the river information at various parts within this application. So I'm going to scroll down using my keyboard, the down arrow key, and go to the one that I want. And I want the one in um, St. Paul. And once I find the one that I want, I'm going to hit enter and that'll select it. Another way for me to select one is to use my mouse by hovering over the item till it's blue then clicking on it and that selects it. I'm going to click Save Setting and I'm going to go back to my dashboard and now the river gauge for Minneapolis St. Paul loads for me automatically on my dashboard. Now I can also switch which dashboard I'm viewing here or which river gauge I'm viewing by just selecting a different one and I can choose a different state if I wish um, so I can go to Mississippi and just select a, a random river gauge there and it'll show it to you. And this link at the bottom of the river gauge will actually take you out to NOAA to give you the full gauge page. Um, so that's it for river gauges and that covers the dashboard in its entirety. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.